24.9 this, oh, this afternoon. It is 14 minutes past four and we have Mark James on the line from New Zealand. You're still in New Zealand, aren't you, Mark? I am still in New Zealand and actually it's evening over here, um, Nick. Yeah, of course. You're like two hours behind us. Yes, look, Mark No, we're is, ahead of you, Mick. We're oh, ahead, ahead of, of us. You. Yes, sorry, ahead of us. Well, you're sort of over that way, which makes you behind, but you're ahead. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We always yep. just say that because we're here. Um, <laughs> Mark's from Creation Ministries International. And, of course, Creation Ministries have their own website, creation.com, where you can go to get thousands of questions answered. They have literally tens of thousands of pages of uh, very, very interesting and informative information, all sorts of questions about creation and evolution and even dinosaurs and aliens. So, uh, yeah, creation.com is the place to go. But if you do have questions, we'd really love you to send them through to us, particularly while we have some of these super smart people from Creation Ministries on the line that we get every now and again. And um, Mark James has been talking to us, well, this is now the second week, and uh, we've had a couple of questions coming, Mark. One of them, and uh, let me just mention the number first. If anybody does have a question, please send it through SMS. Just text 0401 949 949. Now, Mark, we had a question come in, and it said, uh, thinking about your faith, when you first went to university, um, yeah, Kiwis pronounce it varsity, apparently, and we say uni, <laughs> what would you have been an excellent, or what would have been an excellent grounding to your faith as a young person before you went to uni? It's a really good question, actually, Mick, and um, I've been thinking about it since since the question came through, and I'd have to say that but the biggest issue that I had before I left to, to go to university is that I, I it was indifference. Um, I, 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 you know what? I got to a point where I couldn't make head and tail of, the, uh, of, of, um, of the Bible and trying to fit sort of evolution into it. And uh, I got to the stage where I was just indifferent. I didn't care. And um, nobody challenged me. Mm-hmm. And um, thinking thinking back now, if somebody had actually challenged me and said, "Okay, so here's here's some facts, here's some some information, what do you think about that?" Then it would have started me thinking, and that's what I needed. I needed somebody to start me thinking, mm-hmm. and I think um, the the grounding in faith that that would have, that really would have worked for me is just to be to be able to have information at my fingertips so I could I could study it. Uh, you know, and somebody challenge me, get my mind thinking, uh, and get me thinking about the the, the different uh, explanations for for how we came to be. And the more you think about these things, the more you realise that the evolutionary worldview just doesn't make sense. Mm. Were you aware of Creation Ministries International before you went to university? I was not. Um, and, and I wish I had been. I, I often say when I'm speaking to audiences, if, if I'd had Creation Magazine available to me when I was growing up, there's no way I would have abandoned my faith the way I did. Yeah, yeah. So you had more a sort of a childhood faith. Just, just recapping last week very quickly, sort of a childhood faith then got to the uni side of things. And we see it quite often, particularly in uni, when they're teaching you the millions and billions of years and teaching you about a lot of things that don't necessarily fit that Bible story. And uh, of course, you abandon your faith, but then you came back again. Yeah, um, there's, there's an element of wanting to be um, intellectually acceptable. Uh, and when when everybody around you is saying, "Oh no, that this this uh, you know this evolution is true and millions of years is true," um, you, you just you just want to fit in, and so um, uh, you know, it's very easy for people to abandon their faith in in those sorts of situations, and that's effectively what I did. Uh, and again, um, you know, the, the challenges of that stage they came too late. I'd, I'd walked away from the faith, and I just accepted what people were telling me. I didn't ever check it out. I just accepted it. And it really had no bearing on the studies that I did at university. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, you know, maybe having that, <laughs> that uh, Creation Ministries International information on hand before you went to uni, that would have been a big help as well. And uh, someone there yeah, that, that may yeah. have gone through the same thing, you think that could have helped? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and um, it's... Uh, 
it, you know what? Uh, as a uh, um, as a creation speaker, one of the saddest things to hear is when good Christian parents come up to us at the end of a meeting and they tell us how they had young people who were on fire um, with uh, with their faith, and then they they suddenly found that what they were being taught at school um, was starting to erode that faith, mm. and eventually those young people walk away just the way I did. Yes, yes. Well, look, we're going to go into a little break right now. But, um, look, if anybody out there has a question for Mark James, please send it through. Send it through to our text line, just SMS 0401. uh, Creation Ministries International speaker on the line from New Zealand, Mark James. And, uh, yeah, it's been great. Last week, Mark, we were talking about... I guess your your life, your growing up, and um, how you became a Christian, when you became a Christian, and of course that's why we got that question in just before in regards to your um, or you know how to sort of uh, dress somebody or prepare them for university, and um, we'll also take questions if anybody's got any, please send them through to us. Just text o four o one nine four nine nine four nine. Now, um, as far as Creation Ministries International is concerned, Mark. Um, how how do you use sort of creation ministry stuff with evangelism? It's interesting. You, you use the word prepared, mm-hmm. and um, there's a there's a, um, a passage of scripture that uh, is foundational for creation ministries. It's it's one Peter three fifteen. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us the reason for the hope that we have but do this with gentleness and respect. Mm. And uh, the first part of that, be prepared, is, is really important. And, and there's, there's t- uh, I, I believe there's two subtle, subtly different meanings to the instruction to be prepared. I mean, if you said to a parent, um, would they be prepared to jump into the sea to save one of their children, even if the, even if the parent can't swim, the parent would virtually always say, yes, I, I know. And, and that means that they're willing to do it. So be prepared in that case means that they're willing to do it. Yep. Um, but if you said to a parent that they should be prepared for the possibility that their child might fall into the sea, then that means they have to prepare themselves. In, in other words, they have to be able to do something uh, about it should it ever happen. So there's two sides to that, be prepared. You, you have to be willing mm. and you have to be able to. Or we have to be willing and we have to be able to share our faith. Mm. And um, being, being willing, uh, you know, if, if you're confident, if you know you have answers, then you're far more likely to actually engage with people and challenge them. Uh, and being able, okay, that's where Creation Ministries comes in, because we, we're able to give people answers to the questions that unbelievers ask. And that's why um, creation.com is such a, a valuable resource, because if somebody asks you a question, you can't answer it at the time. If, if an unbeliever asks a question, you can't answer it. Um, then you can just say, look, um, go to creation.com, or you can go to creation.com, type in the question, and all these papers will come up with answers to that question. And it's just such a powerful resource to make you able to um, to share your faith. And, and people these days can literally just pull their phone out of their pocket, go to creation.com and ask those questions in the heat of the argument. Well, it might necessarily be an argument. As you said before, it has to be gentleness. We have to be very careful the way we answer those questions. But we can just pull the phone out and ask those questions on the phone straight up. Yep. And, and you're right about the, the gentleness and respect. I mean, we, we need to meet people where they are. Uh, and, and what I often will say to people is, th- the best way to, to do that is to ask questions. Just yeah. to, you know, when you're in a conversation with people, uh, you know, ask them questions about what they believe and, and how they've come to that belief and, and you know, where, where they are in their lives. And... Um, as, as that progresses, people will open up, they'll start talking to you, and that gives you an opportunity then to share um, what you believe about things with them. Uh, and, and in doing so, I mean, the, the, the gentleness and respect is, is really important because if they're an unbeliever, you're effectively going to be telling them that everything that they believe is wrong. Mm. And that can be very confrontational. Um, so doing it with gentleness and respect, you know, talking to them, getting to know them is so important. And then as the conversation progresses, you, you get the opportunity to then use the, the, uh, the answers that you have to the questions that they're asking. Mark, in, in the past, I've spoken to people and it's, it's reasonably easy to speak gently with most people. But sometimes, 
they'll come back and ask you questions at another time when there's more people around them. And it's more common for someone to be a little confrontational. I've, I've found when they've got a few people around them, not necessarily even that person, it could be one of their friends or associates, and, and you start getting people that are almost against you. What do you do in those sort of situations? Ah, dear me, yes. I, and it does happen, Mick. It does happen. Mm. Um, again, it, it's, it, it's, it's a matter of disarming them. Um, we've got a, one of our speakers, a guy by the name of Rod Walsh. And if you ever get a chance to have Rod Walsh on your show, you jump at it, uh, Mick, because he's an amazing man. Mm-hmm. But he gets, people, he, he gets people come up to him and they say, oh, no, I don't believe any of that stuff. I believe in evolution. And the way he disarms them, he says, oh, he says, that's great. He said, I've been looking for somebody to explain it to me. Um, uh-huh. which t- takes the winds out of their sails completely. Uh, and then as they start to explain it, he says quite often you can watch their faces as they're struggling to explain evolution to him. And quite often people will start to realize that, you know what, it doesn't actually make an awful lot of sense. And he just sits back there and, and, and interjects occasionally and asks a few extra little questions. And people can quite often tie themselves up in knots trying to explain evolution. They really can. Wow. That's incredible. I've, I've, I've never heard that one before, and I think that's fantastic. And I'm definitely going to try it. I have a few friends that, in particular, that when they get together, they're a challenge. And so trying to do it in, I guess, the gentlest way is sometimes difficult. So I'm going to try that, try to get them to come back. And then I guess the other thing is to um, maybe ask the one person that you were really working with or working on, Um, to, you know, come and have a coffee with you on their own, particularly if you find a group of people uh, a little bit more of a challenge to speak to. Mark, we're going to go into a little break now and we'll come back to five. And we have Mark James on the line. He's speaking to us from New Zealand. And Mark is one of the Creation Ministries International Speakers. He says he's not one of the super smart guys, yet he does have all those letters after his name that I don't have. So, look, I'm sorry, Mark. I have to say you are one of the super smart guys. And I've got to say, I'm, I'm really happy that whenever I talk to you guys, you're all doctors and PhDs and and bachelors of this and that. And it, it's good because it means you've been through the education system. And that's something we've talked a lot about last week and this week, going through the education system and, and how, I guess, you fell away from God, but then you came back again. And we, we spoke a little bit today about, you know, what would have helped you come back again or not leave in the first place. And um, now that you are back, uh, about Creation Ministries International and evangelism. And it's been really interesting, you know, the uh, the evangelism side of things. You know, how, how easy, how hard is it? What do we have to do and when do we do it? Yeah, good question. Actually, Mick, um, what I would say to people out there is, I mean, you hear about these PhDs and doctors with all these uh, interests you know, in science and and uh, and these degrees in science, and um, um, there can be an, uh, some, sometimes people will think, oh no 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 no, this is too hard for me. You know, I can't do this because I'm not the super smart person that that uh, has has um, been on on the radio. Um, but you know what? Um, my my degree is in organic chemistry. Um, when I was at, at school, um, I did a bit of physics, and honestly, I didn't understand any of it. Um, <laughs> biology, biology just really didn't interest me that much at all. Um, I got involved in chemistry because that's that's what interested me. But a lot of the questions that we get asked when we're talking to unbelievers come from across the spectrum. They'll be about physics, you know, about the James Webb um, um, telescope that's just gone up, or, or it'll be about biology and intricate uh, things in biology. And as a as a chemist, what I've found I've had to do is I've had to actually go onto places like creation.com and I've actually had to learn about some of these areas that aren't of particular interest to me and that I'm not, you know, qualified in because I've had to expand my knowledge to answer the questions that people ask. And that's what I would say to people out there. If you don't have to have a science degree to be able to answer people's questions. All you need is a little bit of information and that information can open the door to extend the conversation on. And, and that's what creation.com is all about. It's all about providing answers that are easy to understand and easy to explain 
that will break down the walls that people have built um, to, that keep them away from from um, from believing. Mm. And I guess pointing to real science, it's something you guys do a lot, which is really good. Yeah. Yep. As far as definitely, as far as information is concerned, we now I I, I don't want to turn this into a, a COVID talk. Um, people have all sorts of ideas on COVID, but one thing I found really interesting over the last year or so is the number of stories that are written by Dr. Somebody and everybody starts quoting these Dr. So-and-so said this and Dr. So-and-so said that. And sometimes you'll be reading about, you know, this story on, you know, a viral immunization or something and, it, and it's written by a chiropractor and you think, hang on a minute. Has he got any qualifications to even answer that question? So, yes, sometimes we do sort of just assume that with people with the, the letters and the, the, the doctors and everything else know a lot more than people like myself that don't. But what you're saying is I can get that same information that you have on most of those questions without actually having to go and do a doctorate. Yeah, and, and the thing is that... Um, one, one thing you can guarantee with the, the articles that you read on, on creation.com is that they're written by the experts in their fields. So uh, if, it, if it's about physics, then it's, it's, it's a PhD physicist who's, who's, who's writing on it, in, in most cases anyway, or it's been reviewed by PhD physicists. Uh, and, and so the information that's there, you, you can trust it, but also um, the articles are designed to be read by the, the, um, the average person on the street. So it's it's designed to provide you with information that you can trust, but on a level that's easy to understand and then easy to explain to, to other people. Yeah. I, I assume... Now, I've seen on your webpage on thecreation.com, there's actually a link down below, and it's just got like an experimental science, and it goes into a video. It's got, it says the words experimental science there. Now, I can only assume that somebody who does have the letters after their name in chemistry has had a bit to do with experimental science. I have, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Certainly doesn't sort of tie into this, this um, conversation we're having today. My um, experience with experimental science within, was in um, uh, ca strained, strained carbon uh, compounds, trying to make uh, compounds that didn't occur in nature, trying to make the most... Um, strained molecules that we could make um it's it's certainly not something that i've a, able, ever been able to use in the, the the real world to be honest nick um but uh yes yes i i did get involved in some experimental science and uh you know what i i i often say to young people we we need christians to get involved in experimental science we need christians in science we need people with a biblical worldview in the scientific disciplines because they're going to have the right starting point for when they come to actually uh, examine the facts. When they start to interpret things, they're going to have the right starting point. Uh, and th there can be a tendency for, for Christian young people to say, oh, no, I don't want to get involved in science because that might, that might threaten my, my faith. Mm. But I say it's just the opposite. The more you get involved in experimental science, the more it points to to the creator. So I would encourage any young person who's out there at the moment, if you're thinking about getting into science, then please do, because uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, but you'll also, uh, you know, we, we need uh, good Christians uh, in the scientific disciplines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, we're going to jump into a uh, another song right now at the moment, and um, apparently they're two hours ahead of us, not two hours behind us. Uh, two hours ahead of us, that means they have New Year before we do. It's not fair, really, is it? Um, anyway, I guess you guys can sort of jump on an aeroplane and almost do it twice, although it takes longer than that to get across the ditch, doesn't it? It does. It does. And, and you know what? It's It's... Not something I'd ever really consider doing, to be honest, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard of people doing it from New Zealand and getting on an aeroplane and then going around to, I think, well, like America somewhere, and they can actually do two uh, New Years. But yeah, look, I agree. I think the day after New Year and the day after that, and uh, just the holiday days, they're, they're they're better than just staying up all night. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, absolutely, Mark. We've been talking about evangelism. And uh, how to use 
some of the Creation Ministries International material with evangelism. And um, yeah, it was a, a flash of the blinding obvious to me. I can just pull my phone out and uh, ask so many of those questions on the spot when people are sort of throwing questions at me. Because so often the questions that we have to answer are questions that you guys from Creation Ministries International do answer. Uh, do you find that? That's pretty much, you, you guys cover all that stuff. Yeah, very much so. And, and I, I mean, I don't have all the answers. So I, quite often I will get people ask me a question that I can't answer, but I do know where I can go to get to get that answer. And um, it, uh, it, my, my, um, my journey back to faith was quite interesting because, uh, as I said in the last week when we were talking, I, I married a good Christian girl, mm. um, and I got prayed for, and uh, I did a, um, a Christian course, and I, I came back to faith. But I was, I still had this um, tension because I was, I still, I was a scientist. Mm-hmm. I, I believed in evolution and, and millions of years, and I believed in these things for, for most of my life. Um, so I, I wasn't really willing to let go of the evolution side of things. So I came back to my Christian faith, but I was trying to somehow fit evolution and millions of years into the Bible. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was an incident that happened with me. Um, not long after I came back to faith, actually, my um, my young son, my youngest son, who must have been eight or nine at the time, um, he came to find me one day, and he had the next door neighbor's um, boy with him. And my um, my son had been over next door talking to this boy and to the boy's mother about Jesus, mm-hmm. and she'd said, "Oh, she said I." I can't believe in, in God because too many bad things happen. Yes. So my son, my nine-year-old evangelist son, had come to me to get an answer to this problem. Why do so many bad things happen in this world? Yeah, if we and, have such a good um, God, why yeah, are there bad things? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and okay, um, I, I know what the Bible teaches. Um, the Bible says that uh, God created everything um, very good. And it was only because of Adam's rebellion that all this bad stuff, the, the suffering, the death, the disease, came into the world. Yeah. But you see, I believed in evolution. And therefore, if, if Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden existed at all, then they had to be sitting on top of layers of rock containing million, um, um, millions of years, or like, supposedly millions of years, of, of, of fossils which, which are death, suffering, and disease. Yeah. So... I could not give my son an answer to that question because I was trying to fit evolution and millions of years into the Bible. And uh, to this day, I, I'm, I'm you know, really frustrated at myself because that young boy from next door, this was my opportunity to speak truth into his life. And my son was lis- listening at the same time. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I couldn't do it. And, and I, I fluffed it completely. But what it did do is it told me that I needed to sort this whole thing out. And that set me on the journey um, to, to bringing me to where I am today, uh, Mick, to, to the point where um, by studying the science, I went back to study the science. I went back to look at how the science fits with the biblical account. And, and over time, I, be, I very quickly, actually, very quickly realized that real science properly interpreted does not conflict with the biblical account. Real science actually supports the biblical account. And it was like a a complete 180 degree change for me. I went from being an evolutionist, believing in millions of years and and, and evolution, to realizing that actually those things, they don't make sense at all. The biblical account is what makes sense. And because the biblical account makes sense, we now have an answer to what there are bad things happening in this world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, I know there's a lot of Christians out there that do, you know, they, they, they try to keep that uh, a, a little bit of the, the, the evolutionary sort of thought in, in their whole biblical perspective. I can remember when I, I, you know, my thought pattern or when I decided to go with it, you know, to sort of go, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with this side, you know, I'm just going to go with the whole creation rather than a little bit of evolution for me. It was possibly one of the easiest things I'd ever done, and I felt relaxed after I'd made that decision to go to the creation side. And it, for me, it's always been easier explaining things from the creation side than the evolutionary side. 
Yeah, and the, the tension, the, the tension between the two just evaporates because, um, you know, trying to fit evolution into the Bible, it, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Now, I, I need to be very clear here, um, um, Mick. I am not saying that if, um, if you don't believe that Genesis is written as history, then you can't be a Christian. Okay. That, that is, is, is not what we're saying. Uh, we are saved by grace through faith. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you can get Genesis wrong uh, and you can still be a Christian, but it's, it's, it becomes very difficult to explain and share our Christian faith. If, if we're saying to people, oh, look, uh, you know, they, they'll say, you're talking about Jesus, and they'll say, oh, but what about Genesis? Uh, and if you say to them, oh, you don't have to worry about Genesis. You know, Genesis is just myth and, and legend. Just focus on Jesus. People are smarter than that. People know mm-hmm. that it's the same Bible. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it becomes very hard to, to convince people uh, of Jesus if you're telling them that they don't have to worry about Genesis or that Genesis can be interpreted in different ways. Yes. Um, and so from a, an eva- evangelism point of view, it becomes a lot easier uh, if you accept Genesis as history because um, Genesis is foundational to the gospel message itself. Absolutely, yes. Well, look, Mark, I've got to say thank you. We have come to the end of another week and uh, we're going to have you back again next week, I believe. Will you be there, Mark? I will be here um, if you want me, if you want me. Absolutely. This is Mark James from New Zealand and Creation Ministries International. Of course, they've got their own website, creation.com. You can get any question answered pretty much about creation or evolution on that site. Uh, But if you do have a question, please send it through to us and we'll throw it at Mark for next week. Anytime, send those questions.